I'm gonna go ahead and uh, I'm gonna claim this is probably the quickest, cheapest way to insulate a shipping container. Welcome to another video. So it's a big insulation day and I'm waiting for the power to come up out of fault mode, which just because the battery inverter combination isn't correct. Uh, early in the day I get a fault. It just basically means I have to operate on minimal power. Like I can't cut what I need to cut right now. I need to cut this here and here, here and here. And what those are is those bolts. And then, so those are like big washers that go through up at the top up here and bolt those things together. And as soon as I can get those bolted together, I can give it a shot to push the backside three quarters of an inch together OCD mm, maybe but it would just be better for all the connections and everything to just be you know not to be perfect on this side and three quarters of an inch out I've already tried to fix it but things would just keep moving so I'm gonna anchor this hopefully that'll work and then give it a push with the backhoe hopefully nothing gets messed up and falls apart but so that's literally waiting on the fault to clear so I can run the saw. And that's not really gonna take that long. But then I've got uh, the whole load of uh, pink insulation. So how that's going in is uh, I've got liquid nails and I'm gonna do little blops and then put it up against that and then put a board on it and then wedge the board on it. I've already tested one, it works fine. And uh, then once that's all covered, then the seams get taped with this here. So this is a waterproof seal, mostly. I mean, I'm not too worried. I just don't want to get moisture trapped in there, which there'll probably be a ventilation because of the ribbing on the top of the container is just... Uh, conducive to having uh you know and i'm gonna get this in uh, before it rains so anything hopefully it doesn't leak through but i mean there's nothing i can do about it i gotta get this in hopefully this is gonna hopefully this is gonna do me no heater on holding at 70 degrees and it's chilly outside it's like chilly and breezy and stuff. Like, so it's definitely not warm out here. Not 70. So, it is pretty warm though, relatively speaking. But, little pink houses for you, me. Yeah, little pink houses. Little pink houses. Yeah, yeah it's pink. It's actually a lot of work, believe it or not, but uh, I'm gonna just bust it out. I'm not done. I still have that pile, a little bit over there. I have this, enti I have this entire wall left to do. The inside of these doors get done. I haven't done that yet. But it's, uh, it's all pretty much done. I have a couple seams left to tape, but it's already quieter and it's most definitely keeping it warmer. I don't know how warmer, but that's the experiment. So just getting this side wrapped up, put in the, uh, the high temp variety there. And this is how it goes, so. Duck, duck, go, found a pussy in 
a dollar bin. Guess you forgot your galana bin. You can't get it loose. Get to God's got your tongue again. Rope burn on your hand. Are you numb yet? Girl, girl, I'm trip by the case. Stood by your side through all of the lives, watching you cry for me. Get on your knees, apologize, please. Now, why don't you die for me? Call me the king, one of my things, give me that diamond ring. Get on your knees, apologize, please. Now, why don't you die for me? I can go, but I'm too bad at cursing. here that I've been working on all day because it has cuts it's been taken off freaking forever every panel had to be cut down shorter and then I've got a bunch of monkeying around to do at the junctions there's all these junctions where the roof is sitting on the container that I've got to seal around and then the, the diesel fuel spot I had some of this, I'm using some of that for in behind that, and that's, uh, I believe that's one inch. That's one inch, it's fireproof, that's why I put it over there where the exhaust comes out, but honestly the, the exhaust doesn't get that hot, it's overkill. Just, I insulated it so it wouldn't get ice, potentially ice in there. I'm gonna go ahead and, uh, I'm gonna clean, this is probably the quickest, cheapest way to insulate a shipping container because if I didn't have any things or I only had one container, well, one 40 footer, right? I've been done. If there was no cuts and stuff to do around, it's quick. It goes on quick and easy and uh, it gives you all your room on the inside of your container. So this container here has a insulated wall. So I was fine not having the insulation all the way to the edge because this beam is actually outside of the whole situation. But eventually I will come out and over. This is all gonna have a roof. But then I'm gonna do the doors, the inside of the doors. So the, the doors will be insulated and the, everything else, right? So the, and these doors are gonna come off soon, so. But yeah, this is really a good way to do it. You just cannot. So 
I was having an issue with this one part of the ceiling that was cold and cold enough to be uh, collecting condensation. And it was just right inside. It was so confusing. And then I realized I hadn't sealed this seam. When I sealed that seam, bam, it just locked everything in. So good. All right. So it's 32 outside and 70 inside. And that's on a level two. The heater with the insulation is able to drive the heat up to whatever I want it. I think I've got it up to like 75 or something like that when it was cold outside. So I turn it on high and it drives it up and up and up and up and up until I turn it down. And then a one or a two maintains it. Like at night, I turn it on a one. And it stayed, I think it got down to like 58. And it was like 20 outside. S covered in snow. So it's working excellent. I recommend it for anybody that needs to uh, insulate a shipping container. Peace.